In this lecture, we'll study about basics of radiation exchange and some mechanisms of radiation heat transfer. So radiation exchange essentially is with respect to electromagnetic radiation and all bodies at finite temperature, which is temperature uh, greater than absolute zero, emit radiation. And the radiation, transmission of radiation, unlike conduction or convection, does not require any medium. The uh, amount of radiation emitted by a surface is denoted by this symbol E called the emissivity. So the total uh, energy emitted by the surface per unit area is this emissivity. The rate of uh, energy emission is this emissivity. And the other concept we need to remember is amount of radiation reaching a surface that is called as an irradiation. So what reaches the surface is irradiation. What goes away from a surface or a body is emiss emissivity. Uh, we'll, uh, most of these concepts you might have learned before. This is more of a recollection of those concepts so that we can use some thumb rules to calculate some, uh, set up some simple problems. So as we said before, the mechanism is that all bodies at finite temperature emit radiation. So how, why does uh, uh, any body at finite temperature uh, emit radiation. That is because all molecules at finite temperature have their random motion. Not only molecules, because uh, the molecules have electrons, the electrons also randomly transition between different states because the energy of a molecule is not a fixed value. It changes, the kinetic energy of the molecule changes, therefore the kinetic energy of the electrons also changes. Both are of the same order. So when there is fluctuations in the kinetic energy of the molecules, electrons also will have fluctuations in their energy. Now, because of the electrons having fluctuation in energy, they transition between different states. And we know that transition of um, uh, states of electrons leads to absorption or emission of electromagnetic radiation. And the because the origin of this radiation is the thermal motion, the radiation coming from the surface is called as thermal radiation. This is in contrast to other radiation such as fluorescence and so on, where there could be other excitements or chemical process that could uh, lead to radiation. So thermal radiation is because of temperature, finite temperature. And all bodies, solids, liquids, gases, all molecules at finite temperature emit radiation. Of consequence to most heat transfer problems, the most important radiation is the solar radiation. The solar radiation uh, is any radiation spectral energy is represented by this uh, plot, where on the y-axis we have the spectral energy density, which is uh, kilojoules per uh, meter cube per uh, nanometer. And on the x-axis, we have the wavelength. So for a very low wavelength and for very large wavelength, we have very little energy. So low here and high here, the uh, spectral energy is very low and it peaks around a value. And the peak of this value depends on the temperature. So this is 3500 Kelvin and so on. So as we said, the amount of energy that is transmitted, uh, emitted is dependent on the temperature. And the frequency of this electron emissions, right? Because of this electron transition, the emissions because of that, the frequency of the light also depends on the temperature. So 
at the sun's temperature of around uh, 5,800 Kelvin, you have a curve which goes something like this. If you look at the uh, wavelengths here, this peak is around what we know as, what humans know as visible radiation. Below this is UV and here is IR. So it's a nice point to think about why does visible uh, wavelengths lie close to the peak of solar radiation. So this is a nice point to think about and see, uh, try and argue, uh, give some arguments and see if you can reason out what could be the reason behind this. Anyway, now coming back to the emissive power, uh, because the emissive power is dependent on the temperature, uh, the emissive power watts per meter square or the emissivity is given by, is proportional to the temperature of the molecules, okay, power four. And uh, this is the uh, Stephen Boltzmann constant. And for any body which is having, which is not a black body, um, the emissivity epsilon is less than one. So these are some thumb rules that uh, we are going to study now. We'll study more about uh, radiation in a detailed class, but these are just small thumb rules which we are going to recall. Similarly, for uh, anything that is incident on a surface, uh, the body can get heated up because of adsorption. So any uh, uh, electromagnetic re uh, radiation that reaches a body because the body is at finite temperature also absorbs uh, wave, uh, wavelengths, electromagnetic radiation, and gets heated up. So now because uh, a common thumb rule that um, you can use is that if a body is uh, emitting thermally in a particular wavelength, the same wavelength will also lead to thermal heating because it is we are just talking about electron transitions here. So electron transition, if it can occur, uh, by uh, because uh, electron transition can lead to emission of light, the opposite that uh, it can also absorb light at that wavelength and get go into an excited state. So this is a simple thumb rule that at a given temperature, the wavelength emitted and absorbed are uh, occurs roughly in the same range. So now for um, surfaces, uh, for uh, not all bodies, everything is absorbed, okay? So the only a fraction of the total irradiation, that is capital G, is what is absorbed. So alpha is called as the uh, absorp absorptivity. So a fraction of the total incident thing is absorbed, the remaining could get reflected or transmitted. So what is important for uh, heat transfer calculation is only what is absorbed. So that is that. So now when we have both emission and ab absorption, uh, there are some engineering approximations one typically does. So uh, first thing is that uh, we assume that the uh, surface, it's only the surface that radiates or absorbs. This is because anything that is in, uh, we saw that any, temp any molecule uh, at finite temperature will emit. Similarly, any molecule at finite temperature will also absorb. But inside the bulk, anything that is uh, being emitted is immediately absorbed by the neighboring thing. And anything that, uh, so that when you come to the surface, so anything that is emitted with surface, only one half of it will go inside the body, other half goes to the other side of the interface. 
So uh, effectively, we can say that it's only the surface that is important. So for engineering approximation, it is sufficient if you consider only the surface area of a body. And it's also a good approximation to consider gases as transparent. That is, it's almost uh, all the energy that comes is completely transmitted and nothing is absorbed. Again, for practical purposes, we can assume that liquids and solids are opaque opaque to this thermal uh, radiation. Of course, it's not true in all the cases, but for a good approximation, we can assume that uh, liquids and solids are opaque, that there is nothing that is transmitted through that. A second approximation that is done is that uh, mostly we consider uh, bodies which are located in a large surrounding. So there's a small bo body in a large surrounding. So in this uh, particular scenario, the absorption of uh, the total irradiation that is absorbed is proportional to the alpha, the absorpt absorptivity, times the surroundings temperatures power four. So everything that is emitted by the surroundings is completely absorbed by this uh, surface. Okay. So this is one approximation that is done. And a third approximation is that the surfaces are assumed to be gray, which means that the absorb absorptivity is approximately equal to the emissivity. So now uh, on the one hand, we have the emissive thing which goes as epsilon sigma into uh, Ts bar 4, which is Ts is the surface temperature. And we have absorptivity, which has surrounding temperature power 4. So the net uh, radiation out of a body is the total uh, emissivity minus absorptivity. So T power 4 body minus T power 4 surroundings. So Again, this is only an engineering approximation, but it's a, a, a really good approximation for most practical purposes. For other detailed uh, uh, calculations, we'll be studying in detail how to exactly account for the energy spectrum and so on. But leaving out all those details, it is sufficient that for in these engineering approximations, we can consider this uh, T power four minus T power four uh, formula. So here is a small problem for you to think about. So consider that you are in the Arctic and you're spending your winter there. And you have a coffee in an ideally insulated, thermally insulated vacuum flask. And you leave it out in the dark. So you remember in Arctic winter, the winter goes for several months. There is no sunlight for the entire uh, few months time. So the question is, suppose you forgot and left the coffee outside and there is no other light, will the coffee get cold? Think about it. Thank you.